Hey there, how's it going? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are making sulfuric acid, a concentrated hydrogen peroxide, two weeks ago about, to around 30% concentrated hydrogen peroxide. If you want to go check that video out, I will leave a link in, uh, I don't know, one of those cores, I don't, I don't know which one. I was planning on using that to make my own sulfuric acid, but I did some tests, I didn't, it's just not worth it. So we're going to go with a pretty simple method of making... Uh, DIY sulfuric acid. It's actually pretty simple. All right, so here I have a 250 milliliter beaker and all we're going to need is distilled water, copper sulfate or more specifically copper 2 sulfate with the positive 2 charge on the uh, copper ion and two electrodes, one of them being copper and the other one being carbon. Now you could also go for lead dioxide um, electrode or uh, which would be even better is platinum electrodes but of course platinum is expensive and I don't have access to that right now so I'm just gonna go with a carbon electrode. I might do a video on uh, how you can get these easily. They're pretty easy to get. All you gotta do is hack open a 6 volt battery or even take some pencil leads, which I might do a video on and then in the future, if this goes well, I might see if those are a viable source. So, yes, we're gonna need that and a method of generating the electricity, which I'll get to a bit later. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take our distilled water here and we're gonna fill our beaker up to roughly 100 milliliters. We're gonna do a little bit less than 100 milliliters. And this should theoretically turn out to be around 100 milliliters of our probably it's probably going to be dilute sulfuric acid but we'll see how it goes so there's that now we have a bit under 100 milliliters of distilled water and to that we will add approximately eh, we'll probably go for around six grams of our copper 2 sulfate put some of this on here i'm using a piece of paper as a wing uh, paper, but that should be fine. But now I'm going to transfer the five grams of copper two sulfate into the beaker of water. And there we go. We're gonna mix it up with a glass stirring rod and make sure it all gets dissolved. I think we're gonna need a little bit more water than that actually. Plenty more water that came from. And just like that, we have our solution of Copper 2 sulfate dissolved in approximately, that's just a little over 100 milliliters of water there. Probably around 110 milliliters. 100 to 110 milliliters. And now, here comes where, here's, here's where the electrolysis comes in. Now there are a few ways you could go about powering the electrolysis. You could go for a, a six volt battery just like this that's a pretty popular choice they're pretty cheap too. get them for a few bucks at a dollar store and uh, there you go and that should be enough to power the electrolysis and uh, you could go for many other things too but today I'm gonna use this which is my lab bench power supply this thing could supply up to around 5 amps at 32 volts we switch it on there we go that should be pretty good. And so, we're going to take this, and this is what's going to power our electrolysis setup. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our two electrodes, and we're going to attach them to our power supply. Now, our copper electrode is going to be connected to our ne negative, to the negative side of our power supply. And that's because the copper ions have a positive charge. So we want our copper electrode to be negative. So I'm just going to curl this up a little bit. And we're going to stick this inside of our solution. And then our carbon electrode, or whatever electrode that you chose, actually. I'm going to take some of this wire I got here. I'm going to wrap it around the carbon electrode so it's a bit easier to attach to the power supply. So now here's our carbon electrode. I'm going to stick that into our solution here. I'm going to attach that to the positive side of the battery. Now I'm going to switch on the current. So you can see here. 
and we should see the voltage and current start to rise. I'll point this at the solutions here, here so you can see exactly what's going on and there you go. Now, I'm going to go into the science of how this is working a little bit later, but right now we're just going to watch the pre uh, chemistry happen. Now the reason why I'm using this power supply and not something else is because I want to be able to control the amount of current flowing through the solution. All right? I want to try to minimize the amount of erosioning, erosion happening to the carbon electrode. Because it's going to erode. I'm going to, have to, I'm going to have to filter out the carbon particles later, but it should make do for now. And this actually may take a little while, so uh, I'm just going to give you status updates every once in a while. All right, I'm here to give you the first update. It's actually been a few minutes later since I recorded the last segment. And I just want to show you, look at that. On the copper electrode, you can see pieces of what appears to be copper metal forming on the electrode. Now that's pretty sweet. Because, actually no, I'm not gonna go into the science right now, but uh, I will go into the science later. <laughs> oh, and just to clarify, I'm, I'm currently sitting at 13.6 volts at around 0.41 amps. So uh, just to clarify that, just in case any of you were interested. Now, a problem with this is actually that the copper two sulfate isn't that conductive. So we're going to have to start out with uh, quite a lot of power, but then over time we should be able to lower it a bit. But uh, yeah, it's, it's going pretty well. All right, it's been about 20 minutes later, and I think it's time for our first filtration here. I'm going to shut off the power, and there it is. There is our very dirty solution. It's filled with a bunch of carbon particles right now. That's why it has that black, black color, but uh, no problems. That's exactly what I was expecting. So here's our carbon electrode. It actually doesn't look too bad. It doesn't actually look too bad. Set on this paper towel, and all right. Now here is our copper electrode. All those copper particles are not actually attached to it. That is fascinating. I was not expecting that to happen. I figured they'd all be connected to one thing, but I guess maybe the carbon inter interfered with that or something. Anyway, here's our very dirty solution. Now, if you're using a carbon electrode like I'm doing, you may have to filter it every once in a while but uh, that's no worries. Here is our filtering set up here. All it is is a funnel with actually a coffee filter in the top connected to an Erlenmeyer flask and I'm going to pour this through our filter and uh, we should see all of the filtrate filter out. Here we go. There's our solution. All right, as you can see here, I have filtered off the solution, and it's this pretty blue liquid again, just like before. But now, we should have a slightly more uh, concentration of uh, sulfuric acid uh, in there as well. So now we're going to put it back into this beaker, and we're going to do the same thing again for a few more times. And we'll know that, we'll, that, we're, that we're done once the solution is pretty clear. It's still pretty blue, so that means we're gonna keep going. Sorry about the noise in the background. That won't be in, the, in most of the video, but I just wanna show you this cool little thing that I just thought was kind of interesting. Here's a clean glass stirring rod. I'm gonna dip it into the solution here. Pull it out. Look at that. Look at how much carbon is on that glass stirring rod. Holy crap. So, be warned. All right, so I'm uh, back with another segment here. So this is actually the next day because the electrolysis is taking way longer than I thought I was going to. So it, it, it was going on for about three to four hours yesterday. And I'm just getting started with the second round today. And uh, one of the reasons why I stopped is because you look at this. This is what's left of my um, carbon electrode. It's completely eroded away. And so it's, there's like basically nothing left. So what I did is I rigged up this little device 
and uh, it's basically a bunch of pencil leads. Of course, you know how pencils aren't really lead anymore, it's just graphite. And so I, I figured it'd work, and I think it's working. The electrolysis is continuing to happen with a bunch of uh, pencil leads kind of taped together. It's, it's a bit of a... It's not very ideal, but it works. So, so that's, a, that's, a, that's what we got now. But yeah, hopefully... Hopefully the electrolysis will finish today because I don't feel like spending more time on this stupid thing.